Yep, thanks Lillian and thanks everyone for hanging in there right up to the end of the meeting. As Lillian said, my name's Ruby, I'm a PhD student at ICRA UWA. Um, and I guess to wrap us up today, I'm going to be presenting some of my work looking at baryon and dark matter accretion onto halos and simulations. Um, so a quick plug, uh, everything you'll see is part of a paper that we submitted to MNRS last week. Uh, and it's on the archive at the given link. So if you understandably can't take everything in from this last talk of the day, all the information is online there for you. So I wanted to preface this talk by quickly outlining the end goal of this work. And it has to do with improving semi-analytic models or SAMs, which are a focus of the center as Chris and Darren highlighted. So in one line, SAMs are a computation, computationally efficient way of populating dark matter only simulation volumes with galaxies. And SAMs owe their computational efficiency to a number of assumptions, but I wanna draw your attention to this one here that actually happens really before the semi-analytic step. And that is that most SAMs assume that baryon buildup in halos traces exactly that of the dark matter from their underlying dark matter only simulation of course, up to a factor of the universal baryon fraction, which is about 16%. So the idea of my work here is to explore this assumption using hydrodynamical simulations, which actually model gas at the simulation stage rather than as a post-processing step. So to perform this study, we use the Eagle sweep of hydrodynamical simulations. And without going into too much depth, Eagle has a spatial resolution of order about one kiloparsec. And below this scale uses subgrid modules for unresolved processes such as star formation, uh, stellar and AGN feedback, as well as um, radiative cooling. Um, so we actually used a number of variations on the 25 megaparsec and 50 megaparsec boxes, which are outlined on the table here on the slide. Uh, essentially, so we can see what happens to halo scale inflow rates when you switch on and off uh, various baryonic physics. Um, so to identify halos in the simulations, we use the structure finder Velociraptor and the merger tree generator tree frog to give us our temporally linked um, halo catalogs, both of which we heard a little bit about from uh, Chris. So before leaping into the results, I'll quickly run you through our methodology to actually measure inflow rates. So we identify accretion candidates as those particles that are in a halo at a snapshot n but we're not at a previous snapshot n minus d um, and for all intents and purposes we use d equals one so essentially measuring accretion to halos between adjacent eagle snapshots um, and we can then classify the channel of accretion based on the history of each particle so breaking down accretion into its constituent components and i don't really have too much time to go into this but it's all in the paper um, if you are interested uh, where's my mouse okay so to start with, we'll concentrate on the reference or fiducial physics 50 megaparsec eagle run, and then we'll move on to talk about the non-standard physics runs. Now, something that hasn't been explicitly explored much in the literature previously is comparing the rate of um, dark matter and baryon inflow directly. So on the slide, I'm showing the baryon fraction of accreted matter, which is the equation at the top left. Uh, and that's as a function of halo mass for various redshifts. Um, if baryon accretion traced dark matter, you would expect a flat line roughly at the universal baryon fraction here, so about 16%. But obviously that's not what we're seeing. And I think the main feature here is that halos of low mass on average have very baryon poor inflow compared to what we would expect from their dark matter accretion. So at about 10 to the 10.5 solar masses, we see the baryon inflow constitutes only about 1% of the mass growth of halos. So about one dex lower than what we would expect based on uh, their dark matter accretion rates only. So um, when we look at higher mass halos though, sort of we, see, we do see that halos have inflow rates, uh, baryon inflow rates approaching what we would expect from dark matter. And there's also very little spread. Uh, but in general, I think we can see that the assumption that inflow is uniformly baryon enriched, it definitely has some, some caveats. Right, so if we've established that 
there are variations in the barrier on enrichment of inflow, then the question we posed is how does this affect the properties of our halo population? Now on the slide, you're looking at the median baryon fraction of halos as a function of their halo mass with the parameter space colored by the inflow baryon fraction excess in that bin. So that's basically how baryon rich the inflow is compared to what we would expect on average in that halo mass bin. So at a fixed halo mass, the strong gradient in color as you move up the plot is essentially telling you uh, the baryon rich halos are on average host to the most baryon rich inflow uh, and that the most baryon poor halos by the same token are host to the most baryon depleted uh, inflow. Now the spread in halo baryon fractions is largest at lower halo masses uh, where we also actually saw the largest spread in inflow baryon fractions. And in the paper, we actually show that this correlation between inflow baryon fractions and halo baryon fractions uh, is driven by the CGM, CGM gas content and less so by the central galaxies, ISM and stellar mass content. Um, but I think it's clear that the picture emerging, at least in Eagle, is that ha halo baryon content is strongly and almost instantaneously uh, influenced by gas inflow rates. So I'm now gonna move on and illustrate the influence of subgrid physics on the results that I've just shown you. So we're gonna start with a very basic adiabatic physics run and work our way back up to what we saw with reference physics regarding inflow baryon fractions. So starting with the non-radiative run in yellow. So this run has baryons and dark matter, but it has no radiative cooling or star formation. This no feedback run in green adds radiative cooling and star formation. Uh, the no AGN run in pink adds in feedback from star formation. And the reference run in black adds in AGN and the associated feedback. So you can see that the non-radiative run and the no feedback run both hover around the universal baryon fraction, telling us that essentially baryons are accreting uh, in a fairly similar manner to dark matter, as we would expect, um, over the full halo mass range. But it's once you add in stellar feedback with the pink no AGN run that you see this massive drop in baryon inflow at low halo masses, which then of course remains when we add AGN on top. Um, so it's fairly obvious, I think, that the reduction in baryon accretion rates and the consequent baryon depletion of lower mass halos is driven by the implementation of stellar feedback, at least in Eagle. So, we then took this a little bit further and actually varied the implementation of stellar and AGN feedback to see what differences in gas inflow this makes in the relevant mass ranges. So each of the panels that you're seeing is the baryon inflow rate in the given run, essentially normalized by the baryon inflow rate in the reference run, so as to sort of bring out the differences. Now the left panel is a lower halo mass bin where we looked at what happens when we strengthen stellar feedback compared to reference physics. So that's the blue line here. Um, and you can basically see that across redshift that this strengthening uh, stellar feedback seems to increase or reduce baryon inflow by a further um, 20 to 30%. Now the right panel is a higher halo mass bin where we looked at what happens in the absence of AGN and then what happens when we increase the explosivity of AGN and Eagle, and that basically just means increasing the injection temperature. Um, and you can see that there's a modulation of baryon accretion by about 20% with AGN inclusion, um, but we don't actually look at halos individually and quantify the influence of like particularly strong AGN on halos, which might then bring out the differences a little bit more obviously. So to summarize really quickly, uh, stellar feedback in Eagle appears to be incredibly important to explain the baryon depletion of lower mass halos and AGN feedback appears to be able to modulate inflow rates in higher mass halos by around 20%. I think the more fundamental result here is that feedback from stars and AGN act to both eject gas, but then they also act to further prevent inflow. And most SAMs really only adopt a model including that, that ejective mode of feedback. So we also see that in SAMs, uh, gas accretion rates to low mass halos are probably being overpredicted, which might be putting pressure on the stellar feedback implementations within these SAMs um, to quench enough galaxies and be able to reproduce observations. 
Um, the recent works of Lewin and Gertz show quite nicely that strong stellar feedback might be the reason for the steep mass metallicity relations that SAMs tend to produce um, compared to observations in hydrodynamical simulations. Um, and our results, I think, provide some nice context for this. So there's much more to come in this line of work and we hope to apply our results to SAMs fairly soon and see if we can make halo and galaxy evolution in these models perhaps a little bit more physically motivated. And that's me done. Thank you very much. Thank you.